Now we are talking about adapting the products and services in the last class. In the last class, we talked about the quality and the different perception of quality of different people, performance quality. Uh, we talked about maintaining qualities and different laws in different countries. Uh, then these days we also have green marketing. If we see green, what are we talking about usually? If we see the word green? Environment. Environment, right? Do you care about green, if a company is green or not? Or don't care? Care or don't care? What if you buy a product? Do you check the, it has some certification, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? Do you check the energy? of the product, energy use, that kind of thing. So, uh, these days there is some new legislation about that. For example, when the companies make the packing, they have to make the packing that it can be recycled, right? Or 60% or 70%. Companies have to pay for the recycling. They have to contribute, if they make a lot of packaging, they have to pay money towards the recycling. Uh, we can see that we have the guidelines for the eco-labeling, like that one, in the different countries. And uh, people prefer environmentally friendly products. So an example of that is, do you know the washing liquid? Washing liquid yeah. used to be sold for the, the uh, clothes. It used to be sold in the bottle. I'm very good at art. <laughs> I always got the A plus on that. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it used to be in the, the plastic bottle, but now they have pouch. Like pouch. So it's just uh, very disposable. You're supposed to pour the liquid from this one into that one. Do you know what I mean? For washing liquid. So the company that made this first got a good competitive advantage because people prefer the environmentally friendly product, right? Me too. I don't buy this because I don't want to use the big one. I just use this one. Also, it's cheaper, right? A little bit cheaper. Save money on the marketing. Uh, so companies that show that they are leading in the environment, they can get the advantage in that kind of thing. They adapt their products that it. Uh, helps the environment. Uh, so we can see that also with electronics, when companies change their product, that it's use less energy or better for the environment, they can get the advantage. So uh, <coughs> we also have to think about the culture when we, we uh, change our product. So you're going to have to think about that, okay? So an example that we gave before, the US company comes to Japan and they try to sell the instant cake that you sell in the oven, right? They made a mistake. They didn't do any primary research. They didn't talk to the people. Japan has a different culture. So we have to change our products for the culture. Uh, Diet Coke. Do you know Diet Coke? Can you see Diet Coke in Korea? Yeah. Is it called Diet Coke or something else? Coke Light? Coke Zero. Coke Zero. Yes, yeah, so maybe the same as Japan. In Japan, Coke don't call their product Diet Coke because in Japan, people think diet is kind of unhealthy because diet has a bad meaning, like you're not eating properly or you're not eating enough, right? Uh, so people in the Western country, they, want, they think it's better because, well, maybe they have the Big Mac and Diet Coke, right? Not much. <laughs> Not that smart, right? But at least they feel like, if they see the word diet, they feel like they're not eating or having too much, uh, or they feel like it's healthy, right? But Asians are not that silly, right? In Japan or China, you know that it's not going to help you to diet. So Coca-Cola realized that maybe that they're smarter in Japan and Korea, right? So we can't, we can't put diet on the can, we have to change it to, to Coke Zero or light, light Coke. Okay. These days the Korean cosmetics are selling very well, 
in the US, I think the sales is going up 100% to 100% every year, right? Because the American women want to get the Korean look or Korean makeup, right? But there is a problem with selling Japanese and Korean cosmetics in the US. What do you think is the problem? Cultural problem? Different skin type. Yes. Anything else? Different standard of beauty. Yes. Anything else? Made towards the ground. Mm. Yes. Well, I'm thinking about the time spent spent on makeup, right? In the UK and the US, they don't spend much time on makeup. Okay? If you were in the UK, what do you guys think who are abroad? Do they spend much time on makeup in the US or UK? Maybe US is better than UK? Hmm? No, they want to spend just five minutes or three minutes, right? But some of the Korean products, you're supposed to put on different things and different layers, and it takes a longer time. Okay? So they have to adapt their cosmetics products. So if your project was selling cosmetics in the US, you would have to adapt your product to make it easier to use, right? Maybe less steps, less steps in the process or that kind of thing because they have a different culture. In Japan, uh, people don't buy the English books so much for reading as much as practicing their English, right? So they can adapt the book in uh, selling the easier English book, like kid children's book, like Harry Potter. Do you guys read Harry Potter? Hands up, who reads Harry Potter? I'm not surprised you went to watch it with Kalti. Anybody else? Nobody else? Anyway. Is it easy to read? Harry Potter, is it easy to read? I know. Not really. Okay, anyway, they have different they need to sell the easier books in those countries. We talked about the instant cake. Uh, American company came to the UK and they were selling the instant cakes. They learned from their mistake in Japan. They had a cooking competition with the British housewives, like primary research. They had a competition for primary research because they wanted to see what kind of cakes would the British women cook, right? So they said, let's have a competition, right? you can win some money. But really they're just seeing what are people making. So they saw that the British women made a lot of sponge cakes. Do you understand sponge cake? Do you like sponge cake? Hmm? Do you understand sponge cake? No? I don't really like sponge cakes. But anyway, it's very popular in the UK. This is like a sponge cake. It looks like a sponge for washing the dishes. <laughs> Alright? That kind of thing. Does that look tasty? Yeah. Do you want to eat that? Yeah. Are you sure? It doesn't look tasty to me. There's no chocolate or nothing, right? But anyway, most people in the UK like the housewife bake or house uh, husband bake that kind of cake, right? So the American company was clever. They said, oh, this time. Let's sell sponge cakes in the UK. Okay? Do you understand? They are making instant cake. Do you understand instant cake? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the US people more like me, they like chocolate cake or other type of cake, right? So they sell a different cake. In they decide to change their product completely, right? Change their product completely. It's still an instant cake, but now it's a completely different type of cake. It's a sponge cake, not a chocolate cake. Okay. Another very obvious example of this is McDonald's in India. Okay. Uh, McDonald's, what's the number one product of McDonald's? Big Mac. Big Mac. Big Mac. Can they sell a Big Mac in India? No. So don't go to India, right? <laughs> don't go to India, just forget about it. Right? Yes. Yes? <laughs> so it's India, 1.5 billion market. Don't need any money from there. Just forget about it. Or not? Uh, then what would you do? Uh, what are you going to sell in India instead of the Big Mac? That's your product. Then you're not McDonald's if you don't sell the Big Mac. Making kind of competitive mm -hmm. like a chicken burger. Chicken burger instead? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes, so veggie burger is that kind of thing, right? So they don't really sell the Big Mac. They change the product, the at attribute of the product uh, for the people. So later you're going to discuss, right, about your product that you're selling. That's one of the reasons that we analyze the culture of the country, is that later we have to decide how are we going to change our product. So that's an important part of your presentation, making the skill, right? Finding out about the culture is the background, but making the plan and adapting your product is important. Okay. So innovative products and adaptation. So we have, we all, do you understand innovation? What does innovation mean? Creating something new, right? So uh, we have to determine how new it is. We have to look at markets, perception. What does the market think about the innovation? Do you know this word diffusion? If I have a, a glass of water and I drop some ink into the water, what happens to the ink? Diffuses in the water. Okay? So diffusion means that the idea spreads among people slowly. Okay? So we should be able to communicate the attributes of the product. So it takes time, like coffee in Japan. Do you guys drink a lot of coffee? Hmm? I can see a lot of cafes in Korea and young people in the cafes. So are you drinking tea or coffee in the cafes? Coffee. Why? Your, did your parents drink coffee? Did your parents drink a lot of coffee? No. Why are you guys drinking coffee? What did your parents drink instead of coffee? Green tea. Green tea? In Korea, what did Korean parents drink before? Instant coffee. Instant coffee? They didn't go to the cafe? Okay, so anyway, in Japan, they didn't have any coffee, they had tea. So we explained before about the Nestle introduced the ice cream, coffee tasting ice cream, and then the young people got used to the taste, and then they started to drink coffee. So it may take a very long time for the, pe the idea to diffuse and the people to get used to the new product or new uh, one. But the goal of a foreign marketer is to get the largest number of consumers in the shortest space of time. We can look at the past to find out what is the probable rate of acceptance. So we look at how did this new innovation go in the other country, and then we can follow the trend. Usually it follows the trend in the different countries. <coughs> so, an innovation is communicated through certain channels over time among the members of a social system. So the variables which affected the rate of diffusion is how new is it? Is it very new? What are the attributes and how do we communicate the ideas? So when people are deciding whether to accept it or not, they think about these things. The relative advantage means how much better is it than the old product, okay? So for example, if we take the watch, does anybody have the smart watch? Nobody owns a smart watch here? No? Did, was that a successful product? Yes. I don't know, not as much as the other ones. Did it, did it give much advantage compared to the old watch or old smartphone? Hmm? What was the main advantage of the new smartwatch? Call messaging. Hmm? Notifications. Call messaging from your wrist. Smaller. Right? Easy to carry about. So is it compatible with culture? Is it complex? Is it too hard to use? What do you think? Is the phone too hard to use? Smartphone? Maybe, for, maybe for the old generation. Older generation? Yeah. Right? Is it compatible with culture? Is it okay with culture to use the watch? Okay. Yeah. Right? Then we have uh, tryability, observability. Can we observe the benefit? Is it easy to see the benefit of the watch? Maybe not. Okay, so we have to try and 
think about these things in order to change people's perceptions and speed up the acceptance of the product. If we can make people think yes to all of these things, then we can get quicker acceptance. If we are the first brand, we can get an advantage. In English, these are often called biros. Biro is the name of a company. Okay? In Korea, I see you call the tape scotch. That's the name of a company. So if we are the first company with the innovation, then we can get that kind of advantage. Our product is our name of our company is associated very strongly with product. <clears throat> so here is the product component model. So you need to use this to decide how you're going to change your product. Okay? In the middle we have the core component. Design features, functional features, product platform. You understand function? Features, design. So if we change these things, we're changing the core component. So McDonald's changed these things of their main product. Okay? Uh, instead of beef, they have vegetables. Okay? That kind of thing. Then outside core component, we have packing, packaging. Okay? We have the brand name. Are you going to change the brand name? We talked about it with case study. Okay? Are we going to change the package, the logo, that kind of thing? Styling, price. Okay, McDonald's also has to change the price in India. Why do you think McDonald's changed the price in India? Average income is lower. Average income is lower, right? Normally, if you go into McDonald's here, you see just one choice of menus, more or less the same price. But in India, they had the price from very cheap, one, two, three, four, five, a lot of choices of different menus, right? With different prices. It's because uh, some people didn't have enough money to pay for the higher ones. So the pricing is different, right? They give maybe less product, okay? We talked about the US movie studios in China. They sell their DVDs cheaper because of the copying issue. Uh, so, we can change those things, and then also the service, we may need to change the service uh, depending on the country, right? Korea has very good service compared to the UK, uh, after ser service and this kind of thing. Maybe you have a lot of people, okay? So, uh, it depends on the country, but uh, we may need to give, improve our you know, which country they have more, some people don't care that much about repair and maintenance, right? Other countries very interested in repair and maintenance, okay? Uh, installation, in Korea everything is installed, but in our, the UK people don't really mind about installation. It's not, actually sometimes the men want to do the installation themselves, right? Usually I want to do the things in the house, but my wife doesn't let me because she thinks I don't do property. So she says, just pay money for the the guy, and I say, no, I want to install, I want to do it myself, I want to do it. And she's, then she says, but you're going to break something or do it. <laughs> All right? And I say, but I'm a man and I want to do those things. <laughs> and she says, no, I won't pay the person not to do it properly. <laughs> All right? So that's the cultural difference, right? So in the UK, they like doing the installation by themselves, doing things by themselves. Even if it breaks, it doesn't matter, right? You save money and it was fun. But in Korea, people prefer getting the service. So we may have to change those things by checking about the culture. So <coughs> then just discuss with your uh, partner about just, or your group, are you sitting next to the people in your final thing? If not, you can change your seat. We're just going to spend about five minutes just discussing with our group. What do you think now? What kind of ad adaptation do you think you need to make to your product for the final presentation? Thank <laughs> you.
What's your product? Country? Flowers. Hmm? Flowers. So what kind? <laughs> Did you do any research and find out about what Finland's culture is about flowers? Yes, they are very positive and most of the uh, houses have their own garden. And like, I think it was 80% of like people there uh, do gardening as their hobbies. And how often do they buy flowers? <laughs> what flowers do they use for special occasions like weddings? <laughs> different countries have different flowers for special occasions, even Valentine's Day. Or <laughs> so think about what they want to What kind of flowers are you going to sell? How are you going to sell them? <laughs> Okay, Okay, but that's now we're talking about adapting products. Let's keep it. 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 Let's Just 
스코틀랜드 할만한 게 뭐지? 그쪽에 아무것도 없어. 저는 그냥 약간 시골적으로 생각해요. 시골은 안 
no, it's not going to be exactly the same, right? It might be a different room, or it might be a different person to greet us at the door. Okay, so it's perishable, it doesn't last for long. Okay? Uh, so, a service can be marketed industrial service or consumer service. So, these are the service opportunities mainly tourism, transportation, financial services, education, communications, entertainment, information, and healthcare, information technology. So, normally, these are the growing. Services is usually growing uh, sector, right? So, uh, <laughs> some kinds of barriers that we face in the service uh, sector, right, is uh, protectionism. Do you understand protectionism? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, a country wants to protect their industry. So in Ireland, the banking financial service industry is important. So maybe the Irish government doesn't like that the German or English bank comes to Ireland and does very well, and then the Irish bank goes bankrupt, right? So they, maybe they make some small type of protectionism, like regulations, that kind of things, right? They, their regulation is different from Germany. Uh, so they just try to protect their own industry. Uh, so, for example, Korea recently made the FTA with Europe and the US. So the service market is opening up. That means that US lawyers can come and work in Korea, right? US law firms, US, easier for US banks, accountants and services and so on. But even though, even though there is that case, they still try to make some barrier. Like, for example, in, I want to be a lawyer in Korea, I have to pass the Korean bar exam, law exam. But it's all in Korean language. Okay? If the Korean government makes English language version, maybe they're helping the foreigners to come and practice law in Korea. But they could say, no, no English language exam, only Korean language exam. Then that's kind of protectionism. Okay? You know what I mean? Then uh, they can restrict the data flows across the border. Uh, we have the protection of intellectual property. It's different in different countries. So different countries have different ideas about intellectual property, different cultures. So if countries don't protect the intellectual property well, we might not be able to make a profit. And of course, the cultural barriers and adaptation. So if the financial service company from Germany comes to Ireland, uh, maybe it can't do well because it doesn't have a good relationship with the customers, right? Maybe meeting the customers, talking to them, taking the time is important in Ireland. Germany is not so important. The relationship is not so important. So they have also a cultural barrier to get over when we're in the service industry. So. Uh, just briefly, we already talked about the brands. The global brand is the name, term, sign, symbol to identify the goods. It's a valuable uh, company resource. So, because of the internet these days, we have more global brands. The global brand we talked about is important to give the quality image all around the world. But we have to be able to, people have to translate. We have to make the balance with the local one, we talked about in the case study where, for example, we make English and Chinese name, okay? We make the, the logo is all over the world, global, right? And then the slogan, translate to Chinese. So we have to try and find, find the right balance here. <clears throat> so, for global brands, we also have the country of origin effect. What do you think that means, country of origin effect? What does origin mean? Uh, Original. Made yes, made in China, made in Korea. Okay, country of origin effect. Uh, what country was your product made in? Okay. So there is some, for example, I think I mentioned before, there is a Venezuelan company which makes a chocolate. And they make very high quality chocolate because they have very good cocoa beans. Do you understand cocoa bean? And some European Belgian company buys the cocoa, same cocoa bean from the Venezuelan company, 
buys the cocoa bean and makes almost the same chocolate. But everybody buys the Belgian chocolate and nobody buys the Venezuelan chocolate. Okay? Why? Because people think that that chocolate is made in Europe. Yes, because the country of origin effect. Okay? They think, oh, Venezuela, what? I'm not Venezuelan chocolate. What, what's that? I don't know, right? Must be not good. I'm not going to try it. Okay, but they think, oh, Belgian, Belgian chocolate, right? I'll try, oh, very good, yes. Okay? So the Venezuelan company has a problem. They have the country of origin effect problem. Oh, that's from Venezuela. I don't want to buy that chocolate. So people has, companies have to try and get over that problem. It influences the country of manufacture, assembly, or design. They have, makes the consumer's perception positive or negative. So it's not really scientific. Consumers, it's psychological. They have broad and vague stereotypes about specific countries and product categories that they judge best. Okay, so what about you guys? What do you think? Can you tell me some country and product that you think is best? Just generally? German beer. German beer? French wine? Italian cars. Italian cars? Sports cars, you mean? Yeah. Sports cars. So everybody, even I have that, right? I think, oh, Korean pasta. I'm not buying Korean pasta, right? <laughs> Korean pasta sauce. I think Korean pasta sauce. Uh, right? I need to buy an Italian one. It's better, right? But maybe it's, it's tasty, just I didn't try it. So the countries have to try and get over this uh, problem, right? I guess uh, Korean companies, when they start like 20 years ago, they had some negative stereotype. A little bit, sometimes China also has a negative stereotype these days of the technolo technological product, right? Like, let's say, TV, okay? But it's changing. My mother had a LG TV, but she bought a Chinese TV this time. Maybe five or ten years ago, she wouldn't have bought Chinese-made TV, right? She would have said, oh, made in China, it's going to break after two years, right? <laughs> but nowadays, the perception is changing. Chinese companies are making the higher quality product, okay? But Korea had that 20 years ago, right? People would have said, oh, the Japanese product, Sony is better. So LG, for example, if I ask my mother, oh, you have an LG TV, do you know what country that's from? Do you think she knows what country LG is from? No, she doesn't know, right? She, oh, maybe the US, right? So one of the strategy of LG is not to show Korea anything about Korea when they were selling in Ireland or the UK or another country, right? So that's one way of dealing with country of origin effects. So you have a name, very bland name like LG, could be from anywhere, okay? And logo, and you don't make it obvious what country you're from. You have the negative stereotype, okay? But as they can change slowly over time. Korean companies got the better quality. Now, companies like Samsung or LG are seen as good quality product. So, uh, countries are also stereotyped on whether they are industrialized in the process of industrializing or developing. So, they, people just say, oh, that's not developed country, so product can't be good. So their manufacturing is lower quality, it can't be, they can't have good technical products. And then we have fads. Do you understand fad? Fad is uh, like, it doesn't make sense. It's like a little bit like a trend. Just people just follow something. So just some product starts from somewhere and then just it becomes a fad. Everybody wants to buy that, okay? Uh, buy that product. So from that certain place or country. So if you, we think about uh, Champagne, right? Champagne is just a small area of France, in the north of France, where they make a special type of grape. So just, there's a fad about Champagne. Why do people want to pay so much money for Champagne? Does it make sense? They can get another white sparkling wine from another area of the world or another area of France. It's much cheaper. Why do they want to buy just champagne? Does it make sense? Oh, 
Yes, you can't be called champagne unless it's made in the champagne region in France. So, yes, then there's, it's like a fad. It doesn't really make sense, but people want to buy that. So, uh, <coughs> then discuss with your partner uh, what is important for the diffusion of the innovation. So, we discussed about the innovation. So, what factors are important for the innovation to be diffused? Or what affects the diffusion of an innovation, new innovation? What do I think? Look back. Let's take a break for 10 minutes. 